It's so outrageous. It's simply outrageous. Today's incident was entirely caused by Jason, but now he's doing well. He's gone to who knows where. Claude blew his beard angrily. Make a sound. Second brother, you saw Jason when he came back. He was carried back by a group of guards. Do you still want him, a seriously injured patient in the Royal City Public Security Center, to sit here with you? How ridiculous. Carol also sneered. And I also heard that when the incident first broke out, Kira went to your son Abel for help, but she didn't expect that Abel refused to save him. In fact, at that time, as long as Abel could go to the police station, what would he do? There will be so many things later, huh, really speaking, your son Abel also has an unshirkable responsibility for this matter. Carol, you fart. Claude suddenly stood up again. He stood up, slammed his palm on the table, and cursed angrily with his face flushed. Looking at the chaotic family meeting room, Rost couldn't help but sigh secretly. As a seventh-level intermediate imperial, spiritual master, how could Rost be a hesitant and unable to make a decision? The Radigan family has been against their own family for many years, and Rost has long wanted to teach them a lesson. Jason and Leo's actions today really pleased Rost's heart. But as the first person in a big family, Rost has a lot to consider. There are many things that he can not only rely on emotions to act on, but more importantly, he needs to think twice before acting. After all, the impact of his decision is not it's just one person, but it will be a whole family. Leo's move of mobilizing the Mad Lions to besiege the royal city may be big or small. It all depends on how His Majesty Leeson thinks about it. If His Majesty Leeson gets angry and defines this act as treason, then the entire trust will be affected. The De family will face an extremely huge disaster next. At that time, no matter how good their relationship was between Jason, the eldest prince, and Master Rudolph, they would not be able to escape death in the end. Conspiracy would kill the nine clans. What's more, His Majesty Leeson has been suppressing his own family for these years. Maybe he is really worried about not finding a chance. Now Rost's mind is also in chaos. Now there are two paths in front of him. One is to stand with Leo's decision, crusade against the Radigan family, and kill the Radigan family with a stick, the other is to abandon the pawn to save the car. Give up Renault, Jason, and even Leo and immediately go to His Majesty Leeson to confess, and maybe save a glimmer of hope. Rost was extremely embarrassed. Claude said harshly, Third uncle, I think the only plan for now is to bring Jason and Renault before His Majesty, and Leo will also go to His Majesty in person to confess his guilt. Perhaps His Majesty can be tolerant and bring us Todd, the family must be saved, otherwise, the family will be in catastrophe, yes, third uncle break it off when it's time, don't hesitate, otherwise, the opportunity will be fleeting, and it will be too late to save it. But. Karen, Claude's friend, also echoed. Give in, give in. Hasn't the family given in too much over the years? Don't blame the Radigan family for arrogantly trying to step down on us in the past two years, claiming to be the only martial arts family in the kingdom. Look at our family. How many years have we been willing to give in? Do you have the backbone of the Wushuan family? Carol's face was full of sorrow. Uncle, you have to think twice. Give in, give in Rost also murmured in his heart. Yes, the family, have you made too many concessions over the years? Because of His Majesty Leeson's suppression, the Todd family has been enduring pressure from all aspects of the kingdom for the past 18 years. Even Kelfield beat Dick and Grayson a few days ago and Leo, as his father, also just holding back their anger and not defending themselves, in the eyes of all the big families in the kingdom, the Todd family today is no longer the extremely glorious martial arts family that the kingdom once was. If His Majesty Leeson really wants to destroy the Todd family, it will be of no use even if he gives in. The family's tragedy 18 years ago will only happen again. The Todd family has been on the stern continent for a long time, and the family history is older than the Kingdom of Orlando. However, when it comes to my own generation, it is so embarrassing. 
when I die, I will see my ancestors under the nine springs. It would be better to tell him how Rost spoke. Thinking of this, Rost stood up with a roar. An inexplicable momentum rose from him, and a dazzling light shot out of his eyes. Infected by Rost's momentum, the entire family meeting room suddenly became silent. The Radigan family colluded with assassins and wanted to harm members of my Todd family. They are really lawless. Carol, send someone to support Chief Leo immediately. Our Todd family will never show any mercy when facing the enemy. Compromise. Rost said loudly, his eyes showing a compelling edge. Uncle Claude and Karen's expressions changed, and they both exclaimed. Claude, Karen, you two are getting old. From now on, you should worry less about family affairs and give more opportunities to young people. Now you two can go back to your room and rest peacefully. Well, there is also Abel, the job of city guard commander is too hard and not suitable for him. When he comes back, I will arrange for him to manage some of the family's properties so that he can hone his skills. Over the years, Claude's group has been against Leo, and Rost has always watched it. At that time, Rost didn't say much, but these days, since Jason and Renault came back, Claude and the others have become more and more things have gotten worse. Now that the family has reached a life and death crisis, it's time to clean up those discordant voices. This this, both Claude and Karen stared blankly, their eyes filled with disbelief, and their mouths opened and closed as if they were about to say something. What? Didn't you hear what I said? Rost frowned, a trace of displeasure flashed in his eyes. Yes, third uncle. Claude and Karen finally did not dare to refute at all, lowered their heads and walked out of the family meeting room. Just when Rost made up his mind in the conference room, he had already gotten into the laboratory after getting the materials he needed from the people sent by Yen Ji. Psychedelic fruit, dragon orchid, intoxicating grass Jason after sorting out the materials in front of him, he took a deep breath. The next moment, he had entered a state of emptiness. His hands instantly turned into two phantoms, making preparations on the experimental table. Jason accurately calculated the amounts of various materials required. His movements were so fast that it was dizzying, and it was impossible to see the process clearly. After a little effort, Jason stopped moving. The materials that were still intact before were now completely consumed. Only in the middle of the experimental table was a bottle of dark green elixir, which was emitting a hazy light. Huh. Jason exhaled a long breath. Looking at the dark green elixir in front of him, Jason murmured, half of the final work has been completed. Let's see the truth of this matter, is it really what I expected? Squeak. A clear sound of pushing the door sounded, and Jason, holding the elixir in his hand, walked into a small room behind his courtyard. The bright light from outside suddenly shot into the house, illuminating the whole house extremely brightly. Wayne held a long sword in his hand and stood quietly in front of a chair. On that chair, the only surviving celestial spirit master was tied tightly. Is nothing wrong? Jason asked. Wayne shook his head, with a stern smile on his face, don't worry, as long as I'm here, nothing will go wrong. Even though my spiritual power is sealed, it's still more than enough to deal with a small character like him. Jason nodded and motioned for Wayne to take action. Bang! Wayne struck the Heavenly Spirit Master's face, and the Heavenly Spiritual Master, who was originally unconscious, suddenly woke up in a daze under this blow. After seeing the scene in front of him, the Spiritual Master's eyes suddenly widened with a look of fear, and he immediately started struggling hard. But what frightened him was that as a Heavenly Spirit Master, his whole body was limp and without a trace of strength. He wanted to mobilize the spiritual power in his body, but found that his body was empty and could not mobilize even a trace of spiritual power. Stop struggling, it's useless. I'll give you Sujin San. Within twelve hours, your whole body will be limp and weak. Jason said coldly, don't even think about committing suicide. Now you are just, you don't even have the strength to bite off your tongue and the poison hidden in your teeth has been removed by me a long time ago. 
The face of the spiritual master that day turned pale, and there was a trace of despair in his eyes. Tell me, who sent you here and why you wanted to assassinate me? Jason spoke slowly. Humph. Knowing that he could not escape, the spiritual master accepted his fate that day, snorted coldly, looked at Jason coldly, and said nothing. It doesn't matter if you don't tell me. Jason said calmly. There was no disappointment in his tone as he expected the result. He put the dark green elixir in Wayne's hand and said, Wayne, drink it in him. Seeing the dark green elixir, the spiritual master's eyes twitched slightly that day. The other party did not torture him severely. The flat tone and the unknown elixir made him feel a little uneasy in his heart. Hee <laughs> hee. Wayne showed a weird smile to the spiritual master that day, but that smile made the spiritual master shiver in his heart. Wayne pinched the mouth of the spiritual master that day and poured the whole bottle of dark green elixir into his mouth. The spiritual master tried his best to struggle that day, but he was so weak that he could not break away from Wayne's left hand. Powerful Clamp Gudu. As the spiritual potion was poured down, the eyes of the spiritual master that day immediately became distracted, and his face was filled with flushing, as if he was in great excitement, or as if he was exhausted after a leak, a pair of the pupils slowly expanded, and his eyes were filled with emptiness and confusion. Wayne looked confused. He originally thought that the elixir that Jason prepared urgently was an extremely torturous elixir, and then asked the spiritual master to tell the real answer when he couldn't bear it. But now the spiritual master, the look made Wayne's heart full of doubts. The heavenly spirit master doesn't look like he's in pain at all, right? What's your name? Jason asked calmly, ignoring Wayne's doubtful gaze. The heavenly spirit master had a calm face, his eyes were lifeless, and he said mechanically, Blanca. Wayne on the side suddenly looked at Jason in disbelief. How did Jason do this? That magical potion just now Jason nodded and continued to ask, Who sent you here? Why do you want to kill me? You destroyed the organization's plan under the orders of the organization. Organization? Jason his brows couldn't help but frown, What organization? What plan has it hindered you? The Tianling master's body suddenly struggled meaninglessly, as if he wanted to get rid of the situation he was in, but unfortunately he did not succeed, and continued to speak mechanically. He replied, Dark Knight Organization, I am the killer in the organization. You saved the eldest prince and destroyed the organization's plan. Dark Knight Organization. A look of shock appeared on Wayne's face. Why did your organization want to kill the eldest prince? Jason glanced at Wayne and continued to ask. I don't know. The organization said that there is something important in the kingdom of Orlando. The organization must get this thing. What thing? I don't know how many people did your organization send to the royal city? Where are they? Wayne, have you heard of this Dark Knight organization? After Jason was sure that he couldn't ask anything, his eyes fell on Wayne. Yes. Wayne said, this Dark Knight organization is a killer organization on the mainland. I heard about it when I traveled to the mainland. Their scope of activities is generally between the Cairo Empire and the Northwest countries. The founder of the organization is said to be an imperial spiritual master. If my strength has not been sealed, there is no need to worry, but now Wayne's face showed a trace of worry. Jason nodded and put the piece of paper recorded in his hand into Wayne's hand immediately asked two guards to escort this assassin to the palace with you. Help me hand this paper to His Majesty Leeson. Let him worry about this matter. Wayne was seriously injured. Although he has been treated, he is still not healed after all. Jason doesn't want him to do this, but it is actually this matter. It was too important, and there was no one trustworthy around Jason. Wayne took the paper solemnly, put it in his arms, and walked out to call the guards. Dark Knight Organization? Something important? Jason frowned, with a hint of doubt in his eyes. The thing was indeed what he thought. He was assassinated because of the eldest prince's affairs. 
However, in Jason's original imagination, it was nothing more than the prince doing it to fight for the throne. At most, it involved the nobles of several kingdoms. Minister, however, the final result was beyond his expectation, making things even more complicated and confusing. No matter. Jason shook his head, the most important thing for me now is to work hard to improve my strength, but before that, I have to find a way to go to the fifth floor of the library to see the strange power that mysteriously appeared, does it have anything to do with me being a child of the Todd family? Jason shook his head and walked out of the room. Outside the house, the sky is clear, the afternoon sun is setting slantingly, approaching dusk, and the soft sunlight shines on the courtyard extremely softly. Dark night is coming, can a new day be far behind? The side hall of the Orlando Kingdom Palace Groups of palace guards, holding halberds, and wearing armor, stood upright on both sides of the side hall, not squinting. These palace guards are all elites, trained by the kingdom. They are all like the imperial guards. The weakest among them is also a third-level spiritual master. Some of the captain-level figures are fourth-level heavenly spiritual masters. Even existences at the level of fifth-level sect spiritual masters. On the dragon chair at the top of the side hall, King Leeson was sitting there quietly, looking at Leo, Renault, and Aubrey of the Radigan family standing in the center of the side hall, saying nothing. Not showing the slightest expression. D. Lin, the number one master in the kingdom, stood not far from the dragon chair, silently guarding the safety of Leeson. What exactly happened today? Why did your two families clash in the street? You even mobilized the Mad Lion Legion and the Second Division of the Guards to guard the royal city. Who gave you this right? Can any of you tell me? After a while, Leeson finally opened his eyes and said calmly, but everyone could hear the suppressed anger in his tone. Your Majesty, you have to make the decision for our Radigan family. As soon as Leeson finished speaking, the gray-haired Aubrey couldn't wait to kneel on the ground, with tears in his eyes and a loud cry of pain. As he started to cry, he banged his head on the marble-paved hall and kept knocking on it. The sound was like a drum, resounding throughout the hall. This Aubrey is also an elder of the Radigan family. His cultivation has already reached the level of a senior sect spiritual master. However, he did not release his spiritual protection when he cowed out. In a moment, Aubrey's forehead was already covered with bloody red. Aubrey, what do you have to say? Feel free to speak up. Aubrey cowed out desperately, causing Nexent to feel a numbness on his forehead. Your Majesty, this Todd family is really lawless and lawless. Aubrey choked and said, I don't know why Leo went crazy today. He suddenly broke into the Royal City Security Center and raped us. Killed the young master of the family, Kelfield, and then led a group of thugs to rush to the residence of my Radigan family to commit murder. They actually actually killed Patriarch Batad and General Robinho. It's really really, he is extremely cruel and lawless. Your Majesty, you must make the decision for our Radigan family. Aubrey cried extremely loudly, but there was not much pretense. Just imagine, the Patriarch of a family is the strongest after the two pillars of the family were knocked down, even if the family was not defeated on the spot, there would be no glory in the future. From today on, the Radigan family, let alone the Todd family, will become the kingdom's new martial arts family. Even compared to the first-class families of 18 years ago, they may still be slightly inferior. Leo, as the royal minister and minister of the general headquarters, you dare to be so unscrupulous and openly kill the kingdom's nobles. What do you have to say? Lisa looked at Renault in the center of the hall with great anger. At this moment, his heart was filled with anger. In fact, from D. Lin's mouth, he had already known about Bastad's death before. He was extremely shocked and angry and did not show it, but it did not mean that he could let it go. Bastad, who is that? The head of the Radigan family, the top family in the kingdom, the royal minister, and the deputy minister of the headquarters were killed by the Todd family at any time. If there was any conflict between the nobles and the kingdom, they would all be like this Todd family. Just the same, if you kill the opponent directly, then the whole kingdom will not be in chaos. 
Your Majesty, please let me report this. Leo immediately knelt down and said, This morning, my nephew Jason was assassinated by an assassin on the street. Your Majesty, this is a majestic royal city, the face of our kingdom of Orlando, but this assassin dared to be so lawless, in broad daylight. By openly committing murder, it is clear that we, the kingdom of Orlando, do not take his majesty seriously Leo's eyes widened angrily, his beard spread out, and his expression was full of anger, what surprised me even more is that this Radigan family actually they were also involved. After my nephew Jason repelled the assassins, the Radigan family actually took my nephew back to the police station and tortured him so cruelly that he clearly wanted to take my nephew's life. Your Majesty! Leo was passionate and indignant, it doesn't matter if there are assassins who assassinate my nephew, but the Radigan family controls the royal city's defense force and actually colludes with the assassins. Now that the matter is exposed, if we are violent, I am afraid that your majesty and the nobles of the kingdom will suffer a loss. Immediately mobilize troops to blockade the royal city. We really want to protect the safety of the royal city. In order to completely control the matter, the ministers and people want to bring Batad to his majesty so that his majesty can make a decision. But this Batad is not only when he refused, he revolted violently, intending to kill Wei Chen on the street. Wei Chen's second brother was worried that something would happen to Wei Chen, so he accidentally injured Bastard, causing Bastard to die. It was really Leo raised his head with a sigh, and a hint of unbearableness in his eyes. This is really something Wei Chen did not expect, but having said that, after Wei Chen learned the news, he was afraid of delays and was eager to protect the king. Without his majesty's permission, he mobilized the city guards and the Mad Lion Legion without permission. In this regard, I have indeed done something wrong, and please be punished by your majesty. Leo buried his head deeply, with an extremely righteous expression on his face. Leo, you're so slanderous. Aubrey was shaking with anger. Am I slandering others? Leo glanced at Aubrey disdainfully, Aubrey, let me ask you, did my nephew Jason suffer an assassination, and was he suppressed by your Radigan family after repelling the assassin? Roy was escorted back to the Royal City Police Station indiscriminately. Was he severely beaten by your Radigan family master Calfield in the police station? When I saw Batad, did I tell him to let his majesty, it's clear that his majesty is responsible for the decision, but instead of allowing it, Bastard sent someone to take action. Isn't that right? Isn't it? Leo, you you Aubrey pointed at Leo and opened his mouth, so angry that he didn't know what to say. It was obvious that things were not like this, but he couldn't refute what Leo said, leaving Aubrey at a loss as to what to do. He just looked at Lee and imploringly, to show his innocence. Leo spoke harshly, Aubrey, in front of his majesty, you have to think carefully before speaking. If you say the wrong thing, it will be the crime of deceiving the emperor. This this Aubrey was at a loss. Just bang 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 and kept kowtowing to Lee your majesty, things are not like this, not like this. Our Radigan family has not colluded with the assassins at all. Leo he is, you are spitting blood, your majesty knows it, your majesty knows it. Leo showed a trace of disdain on his face, and sneered, your Kelfield of the Radigan family is not a member of the Royal City Public Security Bureau, but he actually treated my nephew Jia in the interrogation room of the police station. Sun resorted to lynching, what else can you, Aubrey, say today? At this point, Leo, the kingdom's minister of military affairs, Minister of General Command, and the person in charge of the military department, actually shed two old muddy tears in his eyes, my poor nephew has just turned eighteen this year and is in his prime years. Now his life and death are unknown and his future is uncertain. Your Majesty, you have to make the decision for my poor nephew. Huff Lee Senti on the throne looked at Leo and Aubrey facing each other below, and couldn't help but let out a long breath, frowning and didn't know what he was thinking. Leo and Aubrey both looked up at Leesant to see how he would decide. His Majesty Leesant's words would determine the future of the two families. Despite what he had said before, he was still extremely uneasy. It was because today's incident was too big. 
Batad had a noble status and a prominent position. He was not an ordinary little nobleman. Even now, he was leasent took him down for treason and killing an important minister of the kingdom, and Leo had no reason to argue. Who is this? Just when Leo and Aubrey were extremely nervous and apprehensive, Leeson turned his attention to Renault, who was standing there. My Majesty, Renault, I have met your Majesty. Renault immediately bowed slightly to Leeson. This is the nobility of the powerful emperor, spiritual master. In stern continent, the ultimate power of the kingdom is basically the emperor, spiritual master. Therefore, when facing the king, the emperor spiritual master level has the right not to kneel. Although Leo and Bastard have high status in the kingdom, they still have to kneel down and salute when facing Leeson. Oh? You were the one who killed Bastard and Robinho? Leeson said, a sharp light flashing out of his eyes. That's right. Renault said indifferently, the Radigan family colluded with assassins to harm my eldest brother and even wanted to assassinate my son. He really deserves to be killed. You you murderer. Aubrey was extremely angry. He didn't expect that Renault would be so arrogant in front of his majesty Leeson. Leo, who knew his second brother's temper, shook his head helplessly. His second brother's temper was always like that, full of arrogance. Ahem, Renault, when you were threatened by the Daos family, the kingdom was really ashamed of you. Leeson's originally sharp eyes softened and he said. A uh, Leo, who was kneeling there and waiting for Leeson's trial, couldn't help but be stunned. What did your majesty do? Did you suddenly talk about that so well? Renault was also stunned for a moment, not understanding Leeson's intention, he could only say politely, Your majesty, the Daos family is really powerful. The kingdom cannot be blamed for what happened in the first place. Ahem, it's okay if you don't blame it, it's okay if you don't blame it. Sente rubbed his hands and continued, I wonder how the injury of Master Jason is? Is there anything serious? This assassin dared to assassinate Master Jason. It is really lawless. Sente's face full of anger. Although he was extremely angry about what Leo had done, the Todd family was now at its peak. Not only did they have Rost, the old and immortal imperial spirit master, but now there was also Renault, plus Jason, the spiritual master. The medicine master, especially Jason, is what Nexent strives to win over. Now that the deal is done, there is no other way. After losing Bastard and Robinho, the Radigan family has been completely reduced to the first-class family in the kingdom. Over time, I am afraid that they will not even be able to maintain their status as a first-class family. If trust is again, the de family was convicted of treason. Not to mention the backlash of the Todd family, the fact that the kingdom does not have a real martial arts family and the connections and status of the Todd family in the kingdom will bring irreparable shocks to the entire kingdom, I am afraid that the entire kingdom will be severely damaged by then. Thank you for your concern, Your Majesty. Although Jason is seriously injured, his life should be safe for the time being. Renault didn't know what to say. The development of the matter was beyond his expectation. His Majesty Leeson't didn't care about Bastad's death. Instead, he cared about Jason's injury. This, it was really too much. Just a little bit. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, you have to make the decision for our Radigan family. Seeing that something was wrong, Aubrey hurriedly banged the drum on the marble floor with his head. Okay, I understand this matter. Leo, although your original intention was to capture the assassin, you acted improperly and had a very bad impact on the royal city. You even accidentally killed the bastard patriarch of the Radigan family. And Robinho, until the matter is fully investigated, you are now ordered to stay at home and think about your mistakes. You are not allowed to step out of the mansion without orders. All matters and military power of the headquarters are temporarily handed over to the military headquarters until the matter is cleared up. Later, we will make a decision. Your Majesty is wise, and I am willing to be punished. Leo lowered his head to accept the punishment, but actually smiled secretly. Before coming, he had prepared for the worst. 
If Leeson really wanted to deal with the Todd family, Leo would take all the responsibility on himself, but as a result he closed his mind and temporarily handed over military power. In terms of what Leo caused, it is really insignificant. Besides, now that there is no Radigan family, except for the Todd family, there is probably no other family in the kingdom that can shock the various legions and garrisons in the kingdom. Come on, by then it will not be up to your own family to speak. Well, maybe you will have to get back the part of the military power that has been snatched away by the Radigan family over the years. Your Majesty, this, this, you must seek justice for our Radigan family, Aubrey Cowdowd, and knelt like garlic, her heart filled with disbelief. This, this Leo, killed both Patriarch Batad and Robenho, but only got such a punishment. This is really, Aubrey felt extremely incredible and aggrieved. Aubrey, don't worry, after the matter is found out, I will definitely find justice for your family. Seeing what Aubrey wanted to say, Leeson said seriously, Okay, this matter is settled, no one needs to say anything. It's getting late, you all go back. After that, Lysent Center swung his sleeves, turned around and walked into the back of the palace, followed closely by Dylan, leaving only the stunned Renault and Leo, and the mournful and absent-minded Aubrey. Aubrey, my condolences. Leo patted Aubrey on the shoulder sympathetically, I believe that after His Majesty finds out the truth, he will definitely give your family justice. Well, he will. Pfft. Aubrey, whose face was flushed from holding back, couldn't bear it any more and spit out a mouthful of blood to the sky. Father. After Leeson walked into the apse, the eldest prince, Dios, hurriedly walked up. Dios, what's the matter? Leeson asked doubtfully after seeing the look on Dios's face. Father, Master Jason's men previously sent the captured assassin into the palace and asked me to give this piece of paper to you, Father. Dios immediately handed over the complete piece of paper folded in his hand. Nexent. Leeson took the paper and after looking at it twice, his face instantly darkened, D. Lin, take me to the location on this paper immediately and capture the people in that mansion. Remember, try to capture them alive, and don't let the other side leak anyone. Yes, your majesty. After D. Lin remembered the location in his mind, a gleam of light burst out in his eyes, and he turned around and left the palace. Dios, have you read the contents of this piece of paper? Leeson looked at the eldest prince and asked. I don't dare. Yes. Lesent nodded, tore the piece of paper in his hand to pieces, and said, Let's go, take me to see that assassin. Rost, who wanted to support Leo, missed the opportunity. After learning that Renault actually killed Bastard and Robinho, Leo and Renault were both killed by the Emperor. After Lin brought him to the palace to meet with Leeson, Rost returned to the family worriedly. Rost knew what it meant for Renault to kill Batad. This would definitely set off an earthquake-like event in the royal city. I am afraid that after more than ten years of retreat, his family is really going to face a catastrophe. And just when Rost and others were extremely worried and didn't know what to do, what shocked Rost and the others was that Leo and Renault actually returned to the family mansion safe and sound. And after hearing from Leo's mouth His Majesty Leeson's punishment on him, Rost and others, who were still in shock, were all speechless. Close your mind and think about your mistakes. Return military power? This, what is this? The person Renault killed was the Minister of State for the Royal Family, the Deputy Minister of General Command, and the Patriarch of the Radigan Family, the top family in the kingdom. To put it mildly, for some nobles, even if they killed a prince of the kingdom, it would be too much. Nothing is more shocking than killing Batad. However, His Majesty Leeson punished Leo so lightly, which made Rost and the others feel extremely unbelievable. What if there are some blind nobles who do this again in the future? Rost and others couldn't help but think in their hearts. It was a huge profit. In just one afternoon, a family that had been fighting with their own family for more than ten years was completely resolved. Is there anything more satisfying than this? Of course, this is what Rost and the others thought in their minds. 
If this kind of thing happened again, I am afraid that no matter how tolerant and fearful His Majesty Leeson was, he would not hesitate to order the capture of his family. This Jason is really the lucky star of the family. As soon as he came back, the family regained the trust of the kingdom, and then because of his affairs, the Radigan family was completely solved. I learned from Leo's mouth after learning about His Majesty Nexon's handling of the entire incident, and His Majesty's worried sympathy for Jason's injury and apology to Renault, Rost couldn't help but sigh in his heart. It was getting dark, and the noisy royal city slowly returned to tranquility. The city guards who had been patrolling the streets before returned to their homes, and the Wild Lion Legion and the second guards outside the royal city the division also disappeared outside the royal city unknowingly. That night, in addition to everyone in the Todd family who was too excited to sleep, the leaders of the various big families in the royal city were also constantly collecting information, trying to understand what happened today. Without exception, after seeing the last intelligence collected in their hands, the heads of these big families all had expressions full of astonishment and fear, and murmured, what an iron-blooded method, this Todd family is more powerful than others. Eighteen years ago, the power became even more powerful. Jason, Jason, who is this young man? However, what no one knew was that that night, led by the palace guard, Commander D. Lin, the palace guards raided a manor on the outskirts of the royal city and had a fierce battle with the men in black in the manor. In that battle, a total of 14 men in black were killed on the spot, and three more men in black were captured. No one escaped. The three captured men in black were also secretly escorted by palace guards. He left the palace and heard nothing more. In the court hall, the next day, the ministers of the kingdom, after seeing His Majesty Leeson's routine and seeing the absence of Leo and Bastard, the two famous heads of martial arts families in the kingdom, everyone said it's silent. Leeson told the court about the conflict between the Todd family and the Radigan family yesterday, and then announced the punishment for the two families. He also sternly warned the ministers and nobles of the kingdom that if the same thing happened in the future, after what happened, which would surely lead to severe punishment, Leeson yawned and retreated. Well, he interrogated him for too long last night, and now he is really sleepy. If Leeson was still a little angry about the behavior of the Todd family yesterday, just to win over Jason and fear the two imperial spiritual masters Rost and Renault, and to worry about the prestige of the Todd family in the military, then after after last night's interrogation, Nexent even felt a little lucky about Jason's assassination yesterday. In the dark, a giant net has gradually enveloped his kingdom. If it weren't for Jason, I might still be unaware of it. What exactly is the Dark Knight organization planning? Leeson couldn't help but feel confused, and then he smiled knowingly. Anyway, Master Jason has made his attitude clear, so that's fine, isn't it? No matter how famous the Dark Knight organization is, it is just a killer organization founded by the Imperial Spirit Master. For some ordinary people and the nobles of the kingdom, it is extremely large, but for King Lacenti of the Kingdom of Orlando, it is not that big. Horrible. Just when all the nobles in the kingdom were fearful and prepared to please the Todd family, in a secret room in the patriarchal room of the Radigan family, several old men headed by Aubrey were sitting around a long table. It is the elders of the Radigan family. Ironically, the only thing missing from the secret meeting in the patriarch's room was Bastard, the patriarch of the Radigan family. This is Renault's information, everyone, let's take a look. Aubrey said with a gloomy face as he placed several pieces of paper in front of the elders one by one. The elders all had cold faces, picked up the information on the table, and looked down. It's him. It's actually him? No wonder I felt so familiar when I heard the name. Didn't it mean that his strength was destroyed by the Daos family? Why did he become an imperial spiritual master again? After seeing the information, everyone present showed a look of shock on their faces. Daos of the Cairo Empire, back, then the family came to the kingdom. This incident shocked the entire Orlando Kingdom's nobles. The name Renault was also heard by many people in private. Because of that incident that year, the Todd family was suppressed by the kingdom, and the Radigan family slowly rose in the kingdom. 
Therefore, when they first heard Renault's name, many people felt familiar, but it was I didn't think about it for a while, but now that I saw the information, I was shocked. It's him. Aubrey said coldly. Everyone, now that the kingdom does not make decisions for our Radigan family, do you have any ideas? Great elder, what do you mean? Those present who can become elders are naturally not stupid people. Many people have this in their hearts. A thought passed through him, and he was immediately startled. Hmph, since the kingdom won't make the decision for our Radigan family, then we will notify the people who can make the decision for us. A trace of sinister smile suddenly appeared on Aubrey's face, I think some people, for Renault he would be very interested in being promoted to the imperial spiritual master and bringing his son back to the Todd family, don't you think? But great elder, if this is the case, it is equivalent to treason. One of the elders said with surprise on his face. Indeed, they have no objections to dealing with the Todd family, and even support it with both hands, but if the Daos family in the Cairo Empire is really informed of this matter, and the Daos family sends people to the kingdom by then, if His Majesty Leeson knows about it, if they tell the truth, it will bring a disaster to the Radigan family, even an even greater disaster than this time. I know, but what can you do? Aubrey was like a beast dormant in the darkness, with a faint light shining in his eyes. The Todd family is going to kill them all. I think everyone is aware of His Majesty's attitude. Without His Majesty's support, our Radigan family will never be able to hold our heads high in the kingdom from now on, and will be entrusted to us all our lives. The De family has the upper hand to dominate us. No, absolutely not. Aubrey stood up suddenly and roared in a low voice, the Radigan family was built by our ancestors. We must not let it be destroyed in our hands. The Todd family, it must die, absolutely. Aubrey's body was trembling slightly, and there was a hint of madness in his eyes, and, we just want the Todd family death does not mean that the kingdom will perish. It does not count as betraying the kingdom. What's more, only a few of us here know about this matter. Who will know who spread the news? Everyone present was silent. Well, as the elders of the family, they all know the relationship between the family and the Todd family. Aubrey is right. At this point, the two families have already been in a fight to the death. Either you die or I die. Death, there is absolutely no other way to go. After intense thinking, everyone figured it out. I agree. An elder raised his head and spoke firmly. I agree too. Agree. In an instant, all the elders present made their own decisions. Okay, very good. Aubrey nodded with satisfaction and said in a deep voice, Only a few of us here know about this matter, and the person who tipped off the information was also selected from several of our elders here. Third child, you have been practicing in the family all year round and rarely go out to socialize so it is up to you to inform the Daos family. Remember, no matter what method you use, you must not reveal your identity when notifying. I understand. An old man with black and white hair stood up and nodded solemnly. Okay. Aubrey ordered, the fewer people who know about this matter, the safer it will be. After walking out of this door, everyone must forget all about the discussion just now. We only need to take a look at it when the time comes. Just put on a good show, haha. <laughs> Once the Todd family dies, our Radigan family is bound to rise again. Everyone present had flames of hope in their eyes, and they seemed to have seen it before their eyes. Under the attack of the Dawes family, the Todd family flowed with blood and turned into a pile of rubble. The Radigan family rose again in the kingdom and became the only martial arts family in the kingdom. The Todd Family Library On the fifth floor of the Todd Family's top-secret building, Jason was carefully flipping through the family's historical information. After Jason's injuries were repaired by that weird power, they were already much better as early as yesterday. After a night of training, except for a slight discomfort, Jason could no longer feel any injuries on his body. It hurts. Early this morning, Jason came to Rost's courtyard and asked Rost to see the family's historical records. 
Now Jason's identity in Ross's eyes is not the same as when he just passed the family assessment. Knowing that His Majesty Leeson valued Jason very highly, he still wondered why Jason always wanted to see the family history, but after talking to Lei after some discussion, Ao readily gave Jason permission to enter the fifth floor of the family library for half a day. Of course, Leo, as the patriarch, accompanied him throughout the whole process. Originally, he was worried that he didn't have enough time, but when Jason walked into the fifth floor, he discovered that the entire fifth floor of the library was not big. There was only one bookshelf with books, and the number was not large, only a few books. This slightly surprised Jason. As a family with a long history, it was rare for a family to have such little historical data. Jason, who couldn't wait, quickly picked up one of the books and started reading it, ignoring Leo who was standing aside. Jason flipped through the books very quickly, his eyes quickly scanning the pages. In a short time, he had read more than half of the books on the bookshelf. However, as he read more and more books, Jason's brows couldn't help but frown slightly. No, no, still wrong. Jason put down the last book on the fifth floor of the library, his expression full of frustration. The Todd family has a very long history. They have been living in this area before the establishment of the Kingdom of Orlando. They are a very old family. However, in all the family history books that Jason read, he found that all the historical books recorded it was about the family's deeds after the founding of the Kingdom of Orlando, but there was no trace of the family's deeds before the founding of the kingdom, which made Jason feel quite depressed. Jason, what are you looking for? Tell your uncle, maybe he can help you. Seeing Jason's depressed look, Leo couldn't help but said curiously. Uncle. Where are our family's historical materials? Why are there no historical materials before the founding of the kingdom? Historical materials before the founding of the kingdom? A trace of surprise appeared on Leo's face, and then he shook his head and said, The historical materials of the family before the founding of the kingdom have long been it was lost during the war when the kingdom was founded, and nothing is left. Why are you looking for this? Jason shook his head with a wry smile. He did not expect such a result. In the books he read before, there was nothing about him at all. The record of that weird power in the body is really troublesome. Dong 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 at this moment, there was a knock on the door, and then a voice came in, the patriarch, Master Jason, the eldest prince, Dios, is here. Since he can't be found here. When Jason reached something, he gave up and immediately walked out of the library with Leo and walked towards the family hall. Haha, <laughs> your highness, I have kept you waiting for so long. Jason walked into the hall and immediately laughed when he saw Dios and Rost sitting there drinking tea and chatting. Haha, <laughs> no rush, no rush, Master Jason, I was talking to Senior Rost about you earlier, but I didn't expect you to come in right away. After seeing Jason come in, Dios immediately stood up and greeted him, said with a smile on his face, but there was no hint of blame in his tone. Leo has met his highness, the great prince. Leo on the side saluted hurriedly. Chief Leo, there is no need to be polite. The four of them immediately sat down in the hall, and the maid on the side hurriedly came up to add tea and water to everyone. Master Jason, it's like this. I came here today mainly to see you on behalf of my father. Seeing that you are fine, my father and I are relieved. With a smile on his face, Dios carefully took out a brocade box from his arms, my father asked me to bring this to you, Master Jason. What happened yesterday shocked you, Master. After that, Dios carefully opened the brocade box in his hand in front of everyone. A ring with a simple shape and an extremely ordinary look suddenly appeared in front of everyone. This, this is, seeing the ring, Leo's face suddenly showed a hint of surprise. Space ring. Rost was also horrified and looked at Jason sitting there in disbelief. Even Jason had a hint of astonishment on his face. His Majesty Leeson was really willing to spend a lot of money to win over him. Space rings are extremely rare. The number of space rings in the entire kingdom is less than one hand. 
Even the three major families in the kingdom, such as the Todd family, do not have one. It is well known in the entire royal city that only Rudolf has one. Then one. No one would be stupid enough to sell a space ring. A space ring is simply not a priceless treasure that can be measured by money. Once the space ring absorbs blood and recognizes its owner, others cannot open it at all. This is the best mobile treasure house. Of course, there is another way to open someone else's space ring, and that is to kill the other person. After the other person dies, the space ring is naturally ownerless. When the time comes, the space ring can be opened after the owner is recognized by blood again. Yes, Senior Rost really has a good eye. This ring is exactly a space ring treasured in the kingdom's treasury. With a smile on his face, Dios put the brocade box on the table beside Jason. Superior. When Dios put down the ring, there was a trace of reluctance in his eyes. This was a treasure that even he, the great prince of the kingdom of Orlando and the future crown prince of the kingdom, did not have. Jason gently took out the ring from the brocade box, and the spiritual energy in his body surged. A drop of blood dripped from his index finger on the simple ring, and was quickly absorbed like a sponge absorbing water. Then he took the ring, the ring was put on his finger. A trace of spiritual consciousness instantly entered this ordinary ring. In Jason's perception, a space of about ten cubic meters suddenly appeared in his mind. Dios, who originally wanted to explain how to use it, saw this situation and said with a smile on his face, My father said that as an elixir master, Master Jason often needs to store some elixirs and precious materials on his body. This space ring will definitely be much more convenient. Jason couldn't help but nodded with satisfaction. He had always wanted to find a space ring. As an elixir master, the preservation requirements for some materials for preparing elixir potions are extremely strict. It is easy to fail and get corrupted, but now that we have a space ring, it is much more convenient. Rost and Leo both looked at the space ring on Jason's hand with envy, and they couldn't help but be surprised by Jason's status in His Majesty Leeson's heart. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, did you say anything else? Jason asked. When Jason thought about it, Nexante wouldn't give him something like this, for no reason. He must have asked for it. Ahem, it's like this, Dios coughed dryly, and said, in one month, the Quadrennial Elixir Conference of the Northwest Countries is about to be held. My father hopes that this time, Master Jason, can replace us in the Kingdom of Orlando. Go out and win a glory for our Kingdom of Orlando. Elixir Master Conference? Rossiter and Leo on the side couldn't help being stunned, and then looked at Jason with a strange look. This spiritual medicine master conference is a practice passed down from the Northwest countries from an unknown age. It is held every four years. The venue is submitted by each country, and the location of the next conference is announced before the end of each conference. The purpose of holding the Elixir Medicine Conference in the Northwest countries was to promote exchanges among Elixir masters from various Northwest countries in order to achieve common progress. However, as time changed and peace returned to the mainland, every Elixirist conference became the focus of competition between countries. Being able to come out on top in the Elixirist conference represented the strength of a kingdom. The Northwest countries will also have more say in the political competition. In the past, the leaders sent by the Kingdom of Orlando to the Elixir Master Conference were Master Rudolf, a fifth-level senior Elixir Master. But now, according to the words of the eldest prince, Dios, it seems that Jason is going to lead the team. What is this situation? Although they all heard that Jason cured the condition of the eldest prince who was helpless by all the Elixirs in the Kingdom, they also knew a little bit about Jason being an Elixir, and Master Rudolph and the others also had a very good relationship with Jason, but the two of them it is impossible for anyone to think that Jason's attainments in elixir science are really better than Master Rudolph's. You know, this Jason is only 18 years old now. However, when the two of them thought that Jason could completely recover the strength that Renault had been deprived of for 18 years, and even rose to the level of a seventh-level imperial spiritual master in one fell swoop, 
they also thought of Master Rudolph's respectful attitude towards Jason. After His Majesty Leeson's regard for Jason, a thought that they both felt was crazy came to both of them. Isn't it possible that Jason's attainments in elixir science are more profound than those of Master Rudolph, the number one elixir master in the kingdom? If this is the case, His Majesty Leeson's attitude towards Jason will be explained all at once. Okay. The two looked at each other in silence, both seeing the shock and disbelief in each other's eyes. What about Master Rudolph? Jason asked. Dio smiled and said, Master Rudolph will naturally go with you, Master Jason, and Commander Dylan will be ordered to ensure your safety. Jason grinned helplessly, okay then. It's really a mercy. I took a space ring from His Majesty Leeson, so I have to do some work for him. Jason thought to himself. However, the more important reason why Jason agreed to Leeson's invitation was that he had heard a little about the Alchemist Conference. He knew that the Alchemist Conference, held every four years, was not only a competition between the Northwest countries, but also a competition between them. A rare exchange event. Some rare materials used in the preparation of elixirs are found throughout the continent and have their own regional uniqueness. At the Elixir Master Conference, Elixir Masters from the Northwest countries will use their own elixirs and some rare materials to prepare elixirs. Mutual exchange, this is the real purpose of Jason's participation. Haha, <laughs> then I will wait for your good news at the Elixir Master Conference, Master Jason. Dios immediately showed a hearty smile on his face, if you need anything, Master Jason, just contact the kingdom, as long as it can be done, my father and I will try our best to do it for you. After completing the task assigned by Nexante, he couldn't be more happy at this moment. There's still a month left, well, that's enough time for me to remove the curse for Wayne. At this moment, Jason was thinking about something else. In the following days, Jason carefully studied the seal that Wayne had set, although he already had a preliminary idea, even the medicinal materials were bought from Oliver Auction House, but before the actual implementation, he had to do everything well without any worries. Just like restoring Renault's strength, I didn't make full preparations at the beginning. If there hadn't been that weird power that suddenly appeared, I'm afraid I could only restore Renault's strength to the level of a fifth-level sect spiritual master, and then upgrade it in the future. With Father Reno's strength, I don't know how much more work it will take. The curse that Wayne was hit by was not an ordinary dark curse, but a curse of hatred released by a dark-type high-level imperial spiritual master before his death. This kind of curse was not like ordinary curses that only suppressed the spirit. It also brought with it a trace of soul power, which was extremely terrifying. It was precisely because of that soul power that Jason did not dare to take action easily. One wrong move would cause great harm to Wayne's body. Moreover, Wayne was cursed not for a day or two, but for more than ten years. Over the past ten years, the mental and soul power of the hateful curse has long been combined with Wayne's own mental power. At the same time, if it cannot be eliminated, cured, and rebounded at once, it will cause great or even irreparable damage to Wayne's body. Therefore, Jason must be careful and careful, careful and careful. While Jason was constantly improving and studying Wayne's healing plan, the annual large-scale auction held by Oliver Auction House was finally held in the Royal City. The Oliver Auction House holds a large-scale auction in the Royal City every year, but this auction, in the promotion of the Oliver Chamber of Commerce, is labeled as the best in history. This auction attracted guests, in addition to nobles from various provinces and cities in the Kingdom of Orlando, there were also a large number of businessmen from other countries who also rushed over after receiving the news. For a time, all the hotels in the entire royal city were full, leaving many people without a place to stay, and even living in cities near the royal city. The auction house established by the Oliver Chamber of Commerce in the Royal City is located in the southwest of the Royal City, near the West City Gate. As a large-scale chamber of commerce that is extremely famous in the Northwest countries, the Oliver Chamber of Commerce has established auction houses in most cities in the Kingdom of Orlando, and the auction house established in the Royal City is naturally the most magnificent and imposing of all auction houses. 
it is also the best location. The main roads on both sides of the auction house are extremely wide, enough for eight carriages to drive side by side without appearing crowded. The main building of the auction house is a five-story building, which is extremely majestic and covers a large area. Around the main building, there is a large building complex. These buildings are the properties of the Oliver Chamber of Commerce, which operates as stores. What's even more exaggerated is that there is a huge square and a whole piece of open space around the auction house. When the auction house was first built, the demolition and resettlement expenses of the surrounding people were astronomical. However, these were pushed aside. The flat open space was only used for guests to park their carriages and play and walk. Early in the morning, the streets in the southwest direction of the royal city began to show congestion. Teams of city guards went into battle early to maintain order on the roads. For such a large-scale auction, at least a small noble of the kingdom can participate. As for the common people, there is absolutely no possibility of going in and visiting. The ticket fee alone is not something that these common people can afford. As a guest of items to be auctioned at this auction, Jason naturally received another strong invitation from Yen Ji on the eve of the auction due to their relationship with Jason. This auction is not a small one. Standing at the door of the auction house, looking at the long lines of guests lining up at the door, Wayne couldn't help but nod with emotion. As an imperial spiritual master of the Cairo Empire, Wayne was not new to the world, but this was the first time that an auction held by a small kingdom could create such momentum, even more so than before. Some of the auctions held by the Cairo Empire did not give in too much. As a special guest invited by Yen Ji, Jason naturally did not have to line up at the gate like those little nobles. Instead, he walked in the direction where the VIPs entered the door. Hey, isn't this Master Roos? At the entrance of the VIP passage, Roos and several children of princes, princes, and nobles were walking into the passage. At this moment, a group of people who were obviously nobles also walked in. He came over and when he saw Roos and others, he immediately shouted. These nobles all looked pot-bellied, quite old, and had a unique kind of arrogance. They were obviously in charge of some places, and they were also walking in the VIP aisle. However, in front of Roos and his group of teenagers, these nobles who were powerful and domineering in the local area behaved extremely modestly, and there was even a hint of respect in their expressions. These young men may not have much ability themselves, but their fathers are all princes and ministers of the kingdom, and the lowest are marquises in the kingdom. Their promotions all depend on the fathers of these young men. Master Roos, I am Carl, the treasurer of the province of Hierro. I met you last time in front of Lord Byram, the finance minister of the kingdom. A small middle-aged man wearing a noble robe with a smug look on his face. With a flattering smile, he took out a small pack of scarlet crystal diamonds from his arms and placed it in Roos's hand. This is a scarlet crystal diamond unique to our province of Hierro. It is deeply loved by girls. If there is someone you like, Master Roos, you might as well give it to them. Oh, Viscount Carl, you are too polite, how can you be so embarrassed? Roos said with a fake smile. Sorry, I put the bag of red crystal diamonds into my arms, and my heart blossomed with joy. This scarlet crystal diamond is deeply loved by the noble ladies of the kingdom. One diamond costs at least 10,000 spirit coins, so the quantity in such a pack is quite a lot. Haha, <laughs> Master Roos, you're too polite. This scarlet crystal diamond is just a local specialty of our province of Hierro. It's not respectful or disrespectful. Viscount Naker also said with a smile. Master Agawi, Master Garda, the nobles from other places on the side also started talking to their targets, and during the conversation, each of them gave some gifts at will. Specialties, small gifts, and so on, the scene of people having fun and talking happily blocked the entrance to the VIP passage. Some other distinguished guests and nobles came over, but Roos and the others also stood at the door and refused to give way. Those nobles also recognized the identities of Roos and others. They had no choice but to stand at the door in twos and threes. 
waiting for Rus and the others to go in first. The fathers of these young masters are all famous princes and nobles in the kingdom. Naturally, no one dared to step forward and ask them to give way. They all waited for Rus and the others to leave first, with the idea that it would be better to do more than to do less. The other party just met and chatted for a few words, and soon they were in love. Hey, why are there so many people at the VIP entrance? At this moment, a loud voice came from outside the crowd, and it was Wayne who was following Jason. As the sound rang out, Wayne and Jason walked in from outside the crowd. Roos and others were collecting local specialties with flowers on their faces. Suddenly they were yelled at with a loud voice. They felt as if they had eaten a fly. A trace of displeasure emerged in their hearts, and they wrinkled. He frowned and looked towards the place where the sound came from. Which guy is yelling over there? After several nobles saw the displeased expressions of Roos and the others, someone immediately yelled at Wayne, who had yelled earlier. After all, this is a VIP passage. The nobles who were originally worried that they would offend other distinguished people in order to flatter Roos and the others, saw the ordinary blue-gray linen clothes on Jason and Wayne. After putting on the robe, I felt relieved. What a great opportunity for flattery! These nobles couldn't help but get excited. They pointed their fingers at Jason and Wayne and cursed angrily, You bastards, you blinded your eyes. Do you know who is standing here? How dare you rush into this place? Young masters, you two are desperate for your life, why don't you come over and apologize to these young masters, otherwise, hum, these noble officials are also used to being arrogant in their respective jurisdictions. Of course, to be honest, in a political center like Wangqing, they don't dare to be so arrogant. There is a saying that goes well, you don't know the official position until you get to Wangqing. They are extremely powerful in the local area and they are complete bumpkins when they get to Wangqing. Normally, they keep their tail between their legs in the royal city and don't dare to be too arrogant. After all, this is the royal city, and they never know when they will offend someone who cannot be offended. But who are these people in front of them at this moment? He was the most powerful nobleman in the kingdom. Rus, the son of the kingdom's finance minister. Agawi, the son of the kingdom's minister of agriculture. Jada, the son of the kingdom's minister of etiquette. These are the little overlords of the royal city. To put it bluntly, the royal city is their back garden. In the royal city, they can walk around as they please. In order to flatter them, there is nothing they dare not be arrogant about. Seeing this group of nobles going crazy, the nobles who were standing next to Jason and Wayne all dispersed with a roar, staying far away from Jason, for fear that they would be involved. However, what they didn't see was that after seeing the two people, the unhappy faces of Rus, the princes and nobles of the royal city, suddenly turned green, and cold sweat broke out. You two untouchables, why don't you come here and apologize? Seeing that Jason and Wayne ignored his words, one of the nobles, who was eager to show off, immediately started to curse again. Bastard shut up before the man could feel happy. About his performance, he saw Roos, who had been chatting and laughing with him earlier, suddenly turned his head and cursed at him. Make a sound. Hurry up, everyone, please give way. Don't block people's way to the auction. Roos, Agui, and others took the lead in making way at the entrance of the VIP passage. Gah? This this what is the situation? The nobles were all stunned for a moment, but they who had already become elites in the officialdom understood something in their hearts instantly, and they all hurriedly gave up. A passage. Roos, is it you again? Jason frowned and looked at the people blocking the door, and said calmly, the good dog is still not in the way, so hurry up and disperse. After that, he and Wayne Lee ignored the people present and walked directly into the VIP passage from the path that everyone gave way to. Jason really didn't have the energy to talk nonsense with the little nobles in those places. Roos and others stood at the door with blue and white faces, but they did not dare to complain at all. If it is said that because of the banquet of the Lord of Tallinn City, Roos had hatred for Jason, 
and he was taught a lesson by Master Rudolph on the royal city street, and offended His Royal Highness the Fourth Prince at Bibokshuan, Rus had hatred for Jason. The hatred increased to an extremely high peak. But after learning about Bastad's killing a few days ago, and being scolded severely by his father Byram, Rus was as cruel to Jason as a red-hot iron bar. It was as if cold water was poured down on him, and he suddenly became completely cold. He could no longer bring up the slightest bit of hatred. What was left was the deep fear of Jason. Even if Duke Batad dares to attack a little guy like him, people may not even take it to heart, and he is not on the same level at all. The remaining young masters of the princes and nobles have also been warned by their fathers. Because of Jason, the Todd family killed the Radigan family patriarch, Deputy Commander Bastard, and His Majesty Leeson did not punish him more. Although the kingdom did not make a public announcement, in the private aristocratic circle in the royal city, but it is widely spread. Master Roos, who is that person? After Jason and the others disappeared into the passage, a nobleman who had cursed angrily before couldn't help but asked anxiously. These nobles are not fools. From the performance of Roos and the others just now, they know that the two inconspicuous guys must be very important. Even when Master Roos and the others were scolded, they didn't dare to refute at all, hey, darling, could it be some prince of the kingdom? These nobles were all calculating carefully and did not dare to offend anyone. However, they did not expect that just to flatter someone, they would suddenly offend such a terrifying guy. These nobles were all extremely depressed. Humph. Roos snorted coldly and ignored the other party. They were no longer interested in talking and walked into the VIP channel. Only a group of nobles at the door were left looking at each other. This is Master Jason. Just when Jason and Wayne had just entered the auction house and had not seen the equipment inside clearly, a middle-aged man in gorgeous clothes suddenly walked up and said with great respect. Make a sound. Who are you? Jason nodded but found that he didn't know the man at all but he seemed to have seen him once in Yenji's office. Miss Yenji asked me to wait for you, Master, here. Master Jason, your box is arranged in the VIP room at the prefecture level. Master, please come with me. Jason smiled and nodded. Unexpectedly, Yenji did his work so carefully that he was afraid that he would not recognize him, so he even sent someone here specially. This shows how much Yenji values him. Under the leadership of the waiter, Jason and Wayne soon arrived at an extremely ornately decorated room. This room is located right at the front of the second floor. Looking ahead, you will see the auction exhibition hall in front of you, giving you a clear view of the entire auction. Jason's eyes traveled back and forth throughout the auction house, and the dark heads underneath caught Jason's eye, making it look extremely noisy. The little nobles of these kingdoms come to the royal city to participate in the auction, in addition to sightseeing, traveling, or really want to auction things, some of them even regard the auction house as a social place, and this auction as a, a rare social opportunity, it seemed so lively. Jason only glanced at it twice, before completely losing interest. He lay down on the soft seat and closed his eyes to rest. As an eighth-level imperial spiritual master, Wayne was not surprised by such a scene. He dug out a bottle of good wine from the cabinet in the corner of the box and sat there to drink it. What neither of them knew was that a group of people below were making a commotion while looking at the luxury box above them. I just seemed to see a young man entering the second room of the supreme room on the second floor. A man in fine robe said, looking up in the direction of Jason's room. Are you kidding? I think this is your first time coming to the Oliver Auction House in the Royal City. A man on the side couldn't help but sneered, the supreme room on the second floor is the most advanced room in the auction house. The total is only there are only four, namely, the heaven level room, the earth level room, the Xian level room and the yellow level room. Only people with extremely noble status can enter. Like the heaven level room, only the king of the kingdom can enter. The second room is a young man in a prefecture level room? Are you kidding? Even the prince of our kingdom of Orlando may not have that status. 
As a person from the royal city, the man felt a little embarrassed in his heart towards the little nobles who came up from the places next to him. Sense of superiority. But I really saw it just now. A waiter led a young man and a guard and the man kept looking up, causing everyone around him to raise their heads. However, the windows in the supreme room were made of a unique layer of material. You could see clearly from the inside, but from the outside, you could see clearly. Looking inside, I couldn't see anything. I told you whether you are finished or not, damn it, you can't sit still. The young nobleman in the royal city couldn't help but feel a little unhappy in his heart, and cursed, a young man sits in a prefecture-level room? Are you kidding? It's really a bunch of bumpkins who have never seen the world. Did I really see it wrong? The man in the exquisite robe couldn't help but muttered twice, lowered his head, and said nothing. There were two young nobles nearby who also caught a glimpse of Jason entering. After hearing what the man said, they didn't dare to say it again and it would be embarrassing. Look look at this moment, there was a sudden commotion in the crowd, and an old man wearing a spiritual medicine master's robe slowly walked in from the door of the VIP passage. Seeing the old man, some nobles sitting near the VIP aisle all stood up and bowed slightly to the old man. There was even a burst of cheers from the crowd in the entire auction hall. Who is that old man? The man who said Jason had entered the prefecture-level room couldn't help but asked. Who is he? Hum. The cheers from the little nobleman of the royal city next to him stopped, and then he said proudly, he is Master Rudolph, the number one elixir in our Orlando kingdom. Last time at a dinner party, I was lucky enough to see him with my own eyes. That momentum, that demeanor, TSK, TSK, that's what you call a noble, that's what you call status, so he is Master Rudolph? Some local nobles nearby couldn't help but exclaimed. Make a sound. For Master Rudolph, who is known as the number one elixir master in the Kingdom of Orlando, these local nobles have long heard of him, but this was the first time they saw him in person. In the Kingdom of Orlando, Master Rudolph is the idol of all people. As a fifth-level senior elixir master, he has a high prestige in the kingdom. Even in the entire Northwest countries, Rudolph is also very famous. Many people come here. The foreign nobles who participated in the auction also stood up and saluted Master Rudolph. Under the leadership of the waiter at Oliver Auction House, Master Rudolph walked along the stairs towards the supreme room on the second floor. As he walked, he nodded to the nobles next to him from time to time, with a calm demeanor and no airs. Some young nobles with poor mental qualities couldn't help but cover their chests with excitement and tremble all over after seeing Rudolph actually nodding to him. Under the leadership of the waiter, Rudolph quickly arrived at the door of the third room of the Supreme Room. The waiter skillfully opened the door and motioned for Rudolph to enter. Did you see, did you see? This is called status. Only a person with such a distinguished status as Master Rudolph can enter the supreme room, and it is only the third room, the Xian level room. The young nobleman in the royal city stood up and said to him, he looked around and said excitedly, what kid are you talking about entering the prefecture level room? You are just kidding me. It makes people laugh to death. Is there any boy with a more noble status than Master Rudolph? The local nobleman next to him had a bright face. It was really embarrassing to suddenly become red. It must have been because I had a party with some other nobles last night and rested too late, which caused my eyesight to be dazzled. While the man below was talking loudly to the little nobles around him, Rudolph, who was about to enter the room on the second floor, said a few words to the waiter, then suddenly stopped and walked towards the second room on the side. Rudolph's move immediately attracted the attention of everyone below. After Rudolph came to the door of the earth-level room and stood there, he nodded and saluted the earth-level room, and then returned to his mysterious room. Wow! Rudolph's move immediately caused an uproar in the entire auction house. Everyone was stunned as they recalled the previous scene, and their hearts were filled with turmoil. Is there anyone in this prefecture-level room? Who is in that prefecture-level room? The people inside don't seem to have even come out. 
Could it be His Majesty Leeson of the Kingdom? Are you kidding? His Majesty Leeson wants to. I am also in the heaven level room. Who is in the earth level room? I just heard someone say that a young man seems to have been brought into the earth level room. Young man? Are you kidding? Let Lu, what kind of young man could Master Daofu salute to express his respect? Haha, <laughs> you won't tell me that the person in the prefecture level room is the prince of the four major empires in the mainland, right? Or is he the heir of which imperial family? For a time, the entire auction house was filled with laughter. Everyone was puzzled and shocked. 